Hello, welcome pen friends. We are back with a, with a whole new series. We're going to cover these 10 inks. They're from the Jacques Arbonne um, Standard Full Line, and this is their premium fountain pen ink collection. In the United States, it is exclusively available from Goulet Pens, and they sent me samples of all 10 of these. Thank you very much, because I'm already enjoying this. Now, I'm starting out not in the order that I have them on the panel, and there was a reason for that. We're starting with this gray ink, and I've listened to the Google lady try to <laughs> say it right, and I'm not really sure whether I'm gonna be able to. For one thing, I heard it two different ways, too, but I think it's pronounced something like greed ole. <laughs> but I'm not going to probably do that twice. We're going to call it the gray one, and it's right up here, and we'll just, let's just jump right in. So this will be a 10-part series. We're going to go through each one of them and do a complete profile. Um, we will start right in the Bond Travel Gear Journal. This is 68 GSM Tamoy River paper. We just, those of you who follow me know what this is about because we just finished 30 inks 30 days where I did one every day, <laughs> an ink every day. And this worked out so well, I'm gonna stick with it. There is one change that I made. So, and you may be joining us uh, just right now. So let me show you all of the pens. The three pens that I'm using, um, let's do them in order. The first one is the, uh, for the broad nib, I'm using a Gen Hao X750 with a Goulet broad nib. Um, I've replaced the serendipity for these reviews for now to have this full test run with these 10 inks. I think it's going to give me a little bit better um, consistent flow. The serendipity is an awesome pen, but it required me to have to keep on top of the dipping and it's a hybrid pen so anyway those of you who've been around probably figure that yeah that you could probably imagine why i did that and then for the stub nib i'm using a gen Hao 159 with a goulet 1.5 stub which i'm really enjoying by the way that one and right now <laughs> my lamy's by herself poor thing this is the lamy um Vista with a fine nib and I am thinking about switching over. I'm going to do a poll and we'll talk about it But I'm thinking about switching over so that <laughs> it'll be a little more consistent I'll need to purchase a fine nib if I do that a number six nib and but we'll see uh, for right now We'll stick with this because it's what I have Okay, so um, Like I said, this is the first one and here we are. Let's hold it up so you can see it real good This is a gorgeous ink um, I told you it was available in the U.S. It's available exclusively at Goulet Pens. They have a 2 mil sample for $2.25 and the 50 mil bottle for $28. Now they also have a set where you can get all of the samples and that's what they sent me. I'm going to link you to that and you know, I'll just link you to where you can find these different uh, options that you have and then in your country you'll have to see where they're available i'm not sure and i'd love to hear about it in the comments if you know i found that it took 30 seconds or so to dry it was almost dry at 25 in the broad nib i was seeing a little bit of variation not heavy shading or anything but it's just really nice this falls in the middle somewhere where i feel like it's not too dark and it's not too light um and I'm surprised because I've been through a lot of grays and I didn't think, well, I didn't expect to be surprised or blown away by this ink, but I really am. Um, here it is in the stub nib. And I saw a little more variation in that, which I'm not surprised about that. Definitely you could see more. Um, and that, that stub nib lends itself to that. Uh, 20 seconds to dry. So a little bit faster in, in that particular nib. And then here in the rest of it is all written in the Lamy Fine nib. And it looked like 25 seconds to dry, which blew me away. The, the Lamy's having a good day, I guess. <laughs> Trying to keep up with the other pens. Um, my first impressions were definitely wow. This gray ink is just awesome. And I was just about ready to buy a bottle of um, Noodler's Lexington Gray, even though I'm not really, I, I don't buy ink for its permanence. So we'll talk about it more when we look at the comparison panel. Uh, but this one is now up there, even though it's more expensive. It's up there on the top of my list right at the moment. 
um, I said the flow is super nice. I just love really good flow coming out of the pens. The shade and the color agrees with me very well too. So, and I, I am going to be jotting down the per mil uh, price on all the reviews from now on, just basically based on the bottle um, bottle price, just for my own record. So we will keep this here and we'll go on to Rhodia paper and then we'll look at the backs of each one. I made another little booklet because we filled up the other one. <laughs> this is Rhodia 80 GSM dot grid paper. Here it is in the broad nib. There are times when I, when I move from uh, Tamoy River paper over to Rhodia where I feel like, oh, it just, the experience uh, kind of goes downhill, but that's not the case with this ink here. Um, took about 30 seconds to dry. I was still seeing some smearing at 25. I thought it looked super good there. Um, saw a little variety, a little shading, not too much, but enough that it still made it interesting. And then here it is in the stub nib, the 1.5 Goulet stub nib. I thought it looked really nice in there. Immediately I'm happy with my choice to uh, to use this Gen Hao for the reviews. I, I love the serendipity and I will use it daily for letter writing, but I just need a higher level of consistency for these reviews. So, Okay, so all the way down to here, we're still in the stub and it took about 20 seconds to dry in that nib. Huh. Okay, then in the Lamy Fine Nib, it was almost dry at 20 seconds. I thought it still held its own as far as being saturated enough. I like that. I mean, I, I was beginning to form a, a, you know, kind of an idea of why they're called premium because that's really good to hold up that well in the Lamy Fine Nib. Notes, this ink performs just as well on Rhodia as Tamoy River. I'm a goner. Yeah, there goes my pen allowance. <laughs> okay, my next one. The current one is gone. Okay, so next I've got it on CVS Caliber paper. <clears throat> this is an inexpensive notebook in a 5x7 size. I use a much larger one every day for really rough notes. Um, kind of, I call it a process notebook. So I like to see how the inks do so that I can predict whether or not I'll be happy with it. Because this paper doesn't like all inks, but it goes very well with this, with this ink. And the broad nib, it took 25 seconds to dry. Might have been just a tiny bit of a smear, but it was almost dry. <clears throat> and then in the uh, Goulet stub, 20 seconds to dry, not bad. Okay. And then down in the fine nib, this is what it looked like. And I was having trouble. I think someone was talking to me. <laughs> and I kept trying to keep count. And But it just seemed like it was taking longer to dry in the fine nib. Which just, well, it did the same thing over here. To, or it, it, it took longer than the stub. So it was confusing me. But that's what it was doing today. So, and very good ink paper match. CVS. Yes, you can't always say that. But this is... And that makes me happy because when I write with gray, I like it throughout all my notebooks. And then I like to use color too, but gray goes with everything. So, okay, on the back of the, the notebook, you get some ghosting. That's very typical, uh, but nothing that would bother you. You can write on the back and it'll be great. Okay, let's see. I had one thing I wanted to show you, but we'll do that next. Okay, so on the back of the Rhodia, Perfect. Uh, barely can see a shadow of the paint, or not painted on, but you know, I scribbled that on with the broad nib and it didn't go through and it didn't shadow or ghost or anything. Okay, now on the back of the 68 GSM Tamoy River paper, we get what's fairly typical. Let's see if we put a paper in between just to avoid anything too heavy from that other side. Okay, so you just get typical ghosting, but it certainly doesn't bother me at all. No bleed through whatsoever. Okay, I did want to show you one more notebook, and that is the Cafe Note. Uh, it's a B6 Slim by Nanami Paper Company, and uh, just a little regular journaling in here with the uh, Gen Hao X750 with the broad nib. In fact, that was my favorite nib for this ink. That's just personal, but I thought it, it looks really nice. You get, you don't get the idea that it looks black and you don't get the idea that it's a pale, you know, washed out gray either. So really nice. 
So on the back, we'll have to put up with whatever was last there, but you just get your normal ghosting. So I, I, don't, I don't know, I really like this. Okay, so there's that. Oh, well, we do need to look at the ink splatters. That's, that's a fun thing. And it was really fun with this. I don't know what caused that, but I liked it. It almost looked like little eyelashes, like you could start a little drawing of a creature or something. And let's see on the back. Okay, so this is the thinner 52 GSM Chamoy River paper, and you get more shadowing and a little bit of a seep through, but uh, very pretty. <clears throat> I, I couldn't, I don't get tired of doing that. I just love it. So let's look at the comparison panel. I have quite a few gray inks. In fact, I found one at the last minute that is not on one of these little boards. So I am gonna just have to show you what it looks like on the cola index, cola ring. But uh, we got quite a few here we can look at. Whoops, they're a little crooked. Okay, oh my goodness. Okay, so right in the middle is our ink of the day, our gray by Jacques, Jacques Sarban. <clears throat> and we can see, oh, that's what I forgot to show you. Oh my gosh. Okay, give me one day off and this is what happens. This is the bath test. So we're noticing here that um, we have quite a bit of water resistance with this ink. That also surprised me. I don't know why, but it did. But that's 20 minutes, folks, just submerged in water, timed and taken out and dried. So that's not bad. Very good. Some of you will be really interested in that. Okay, so there it is. Now this was, uh, okay, my favorite up to this point has been Diamine Earl Grey. I love it. It's a little darker, but I still love the ink. I do. I love it for art, especially. It's got complexity that you can't beat. But I have been looking for a grayer gray. So I've been using a sample that a pen friend sent of Noodler's Lexington Gray. I've been really happy with it. It kind of looks like a pencil in my journals, and I like it. And certainly the price is right. It's got the, the permanence, but I don't know. I, be, given the price of the ink, I would already have it if I was sure, I guess. Yeah, I think I'd already have it. So I've been still looking, you know, kind of looking at all the different grays. Here's Diamine Gray right beside it. And that looks like it has a little less resistance to the water. <clears throat> but I'd have to do further testing. I have not yet profiled that one. And then we're going to be doing a whole series of the Pure Pens. Uh, that will be coming up after um, this series at some point, as soon as possible. Th this is their gray. It's, well, it's slate. I, I can't pronounce the first word yet, but slate, I can say. And that appears to be darker. It, it just does on the surface. We'd have to look at it in some nibs for sure. And then we've got down here, Karen Dash Infinite Gray. I've only dabbled with the sample and I have not yet profiled this ink, but I think it's very interesting and worthy of comparison. And then we've got a shimmer ink down here, Diamine Moon Dust. That, um, let me see if I can hold that up. Yeah, that's got a lot of shimmer, that is neat. Now why I haven't already profiled that one, I don't know. I think it's just the sheer number of inks that I'm trying to profile. And then up here we have Caveco Smoky Gray. We have a Pilot of Roshizuku that has quite a bit of blue in it. It sort of changes, the color sort of changes. Fu Fuyu, oh dear. I, I'm sorry to anybody whose language that is because I'm afraid I'm mangling it. I'm gonna let you read it, but it is different. <clears throat> and I have not had that deep dive with that ink yet. So, what else have we not talked about? I've used uh, Diamine Earl Grey a lot, and like I said, it's, it appears darker coming out of a nib, but it, yet it still looks gray. So I like that. Now, I've got a few extras. You know how that goes. This is the one that a pen friend just sent me, and I haven't had time to get it on one of these boards. I almost pulled it off, but then I knew my drying times and my delay would just be long. So I will, before we do our next gray ink, I'll have this on a little panel to show the water resistance, but gee, it kind of seems to fall somewhere in between uh, today's and some of the darker ones. It's very pretty. <clears throat> Okay, and then Ink Journal had their Holiday Blend, which is a considerably lighter. And I remember it coming out of a nib being a little lighter too, but very, this is the one they called Silver Bells, and we do have a recipe to get that if we want to make it. 
from the uh, Platinum Mixables, I think. Oh, okay, that's... Maybe I told... I told stories! I had done this! Oh, y'all, if you could see my desk area. Okay, so I had done this. Well, now we can look at that one. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It kind of falls... Where does it fall? Right here, maybe. It looks a lot like moon dust. Let's see. Huh! Well, there you could see for yourself how it compares with today's. It's got a little bit more interesting color in the middle. Those Pilot Arosha Zuku inks are very interesting. Okay, well, I'm glad I had done that. I couldn't figure why I hadn't. Okay, if you want to go lighter, and I believe I've already uh, profiled this one, Diamine Silver Fox. We'll, that will show up on the, the gray playlist. Whoops, I'm giving you kind of a shadow. <clears throat> but that's much lighter. It's too light for me uh, with, with my uh, vision and <laughs> glasses and everything. Actually, for the last four days, y'all, I've been dealing with a problem with one of my eyes, my eyelid. It's better now, but I was just, oh, it was just so frustrating. Okay, so darker, and we're going to a gold shimmer ink now. But by the parent company, the same parent company, the J. Arbonne. I know they have done some things to their branding, so I'm not sure exactly what this is called now, but this is a, a gold shimmer ink and quite a bit darker. It's the stormy gray in the 1670. It kind of falls dark, you know, quite a bit darker. I like the ink, uh, but I need more time with it, I think. So it's got gold shimmer ink. <clears throat> Oh, here's a dark one, too. And I have profiled this one, Birmingham Tarnished Nickel, a very complex, beautiful, dark, dark gray ink. Kind of, it's even darker than Earl Gray, in my opinion. So there, there we have it. Now, uh, I'm sticking with using the little booklet that Brian at the pen thing sent me. I've done a separate review on the booklet, but there's still pages in it, and I don't want to waste it. So uh, here we go. I said, a real contender for my pen money. Excellent flow, color, and behavior. Definitely, I thought it was well saturated and it had extremely good flow. And that's important to me. I just hate it when a pen feels dry, you know, when the ink feels dry coming out of it. I thought it had some shading, but uh, you know, I didn't give it an average, I, a little below average for shading. I didn't have any bleeding or feathering with it. And so it's like, what, how, I'm still grappling with uh, rating inks because what would you give it? Like a low number, a high number because it didn't bleed? <clears throat> I don't know why I can't get my mind around that. Dry time I thought was pretty average. It was good. It wasn't too long or short. I didn't, I didn't actually see sheen. Huh. You could tell it that it's got a, a variety there. Hmm. Anyway, I didn't happen to feel like I saw sheen, halo, or shimmer. And overall, I gave it a 9. I, I fell for it really hard and fast. It behaves well across all the papers that I want to write with and in my three primary pens. And I have to say that this pen, uh, I actually, if, I thought that this broad nib was going to be a little drier than the serendipity, so I was prepared to like chuck the whole thing and go back to the serendipity, but this is doing really well, and it is my favorite of my Gen Hals. They don't all act 100% the same, but this will be a good one for reviewing. I'll miss it. I'll miss it in my regular stable, but I might be able to uh, replicate it if I can find another one that has that good of flow. So that was, that was what I thought of the ink. I was surprised how much I liked it. I was prepared to try not to because I felt like, well, uh, it's a little bit expensive. But, okay, I need to get a paper. We're going to try the Nick Stewart technique. If I can get something underneath just for, just to catch any spills. And our last one sort of dried funny, but it was fun. And those trees, those are really cool till then something happened up here. <laughs> And that can happen at times. But I'd like to try the Nick Stewart technique. This will be the first of this uh, line of inks that I've tried it with. So we've got our sample. And uh, everything is everywhere. My paintbrush. i got to get used to that. There's my broad and fine nib. Okay, let's go. I'm going to put down some uh, water. 
nice and generous with the water there. And then we'll see what the ink does. Okay, just kind of dab it on. Ooh, it moved fast. Oops, I hope I'm not splashing everywhere. It moved fast, didn't it? Oh, look at that. <clears throat> Neat. I love it when it makes kind of the sideways. Uh... Okay. Get too carried away up there because I'd like to get kind of a line down in the bottom. Hmm. Definitely moves. That's good. I like that. I like it. I like it when it uh, shows that ability to move up the. You can, I mean, that gives you already a little bit of an illusion of trees and stuff. Okay, let's do the bottom part. I did not select a second color. I really wanted to look at this by itself right now anyway. It might become a second color for one of the other colors or something. Okay. Well, I t it didn't mean to do that, but it happened. So when we use this kind of ink with this technique, we know we're going to get some permanent lines that stay behind because of the water test and, and uh, the chromatography, which I kind of skipped over, but it's there. I might pull that out in a minute. <laughs> huh. All right. Now, I like to go back up here, put in a couple of details. Huh. It's very, very uh, reactive. That's good. You, you're not going to probably get, well, I don't believe we're, we're going to get more than the one color here. There's lots of water there, so that's not going to do too much. Uh, but I do like this. <clears throat> I think it's going to dry with several different uh, colors. <laughs> we don't know what we have yet. But that's interesting how one side took on the darker color and the other side didn't. That's interesting. <laughs> All right. What am I missing? I know what I'm missing. Something a little more down for the other part. Ooh, nice. We got a little portal there. Let's see if it'll go. Oh, look at that. That's the first time that's ever happened to me where it went back up. I've, I've had it travel down several times. Oh, that's spooky and neat. I like that. Huh. I hope you're seeing it. Sometimes I'm not paying attention to what you're seeing and I'm wondering if you're seeing, but that's because, you know, attention span, Chris. <laughs> Neat. I could do this all day, but this is just to get an idea and we'll also look at it once it's dry. <clears throat> all right, this is fun. Okay, now this is gonna be a little different. I'm gonna move this aside. We're gonna talk about what's next. <laughs> and then whatever I say, I have to stick to. Okay, because I haven't decided yet. But what I'm trying to do, how about this one? Let's do the brown next, okay? And uh, I will remember that that's the one that'll be next. That uh, can't say it, but it's brown. <laughs> These are some really nice fall colors when you really get to looking at this. And we've got a variety too, because we've even got a purple, we've got a green, we've got red. Very nice colors. So we'll do this one next, <clears throat> and I'll try to learn how to pronounce it. But the question of the day is, um, you know, how do you feel about gray inks? And this one in particular, did it surprise you? Uh, it did me. It really did. I, uh, I thought, well, I've seen about everything for gray. But I'm really, really excited about the, the features of this ink, how it's, it's partially... Um, it's definitely resistant to water to some degree anyway. It's not going to be the same as when you address the, you know, the envelope. It, it, it got lighter. In fact, let's, let's grab that chromatography. I don't even think I paused to hold that up correctly for you. So I think we got time to do that. It's there. And it did show what was going to happen. See, it, it did show a, a pretty steady line where I drew it on, and then it just went right up in a very gray sort of way. It didn't uh, have that kind of complexity, but it certainly is a solid gray. <clears throat> and I am super happy that I got to learn about this one. 
Okay, so I welcome all your comments. I'd love to hear what you think of today's or any of the other ones on the panel or ones that you have that I have never seen. That's what's so much fun to kind of network with each other and, and learn more. <clears throat> so I'll see you on the next one, which will be the brown one. And uh, have an awesome weekend. Bye for now.